Welcome to the Locks DFS Week 7 NFL Preview. We're going to look at the DraftKings and FanDuel pricing. I'm here with Taylor and Addy. How are you guys doing on this Friday night? We're recording this very late. Doing well. Yeah, we should have recorded this earlier. Fuck. <laughs> I'm doing well, though. Whoa, an F-bomb that early in the podcast. Come on, Taylor. Yeah. Jeez. True. How dare you? This is for family. It should be refreshing. Every other podcast, they don't cuss. Honestly, I feel like we have really gone on a downward trend of cursing. Um, As in cursing less? Yeah, cursing less. Yeah, like we're. we're I never cursed much. a lot to begin with. Yeah, know? I agree. I feel like it's mostly me and Taylor. Yeah. I curse, though. You know, if I anyone wants to. Know. Oh, here we are. T- yeah. Yep. What'd you say? When, I'm t- when Pekka Renee got hurt today. <laughs> I might have slipped a couple a couple naughty words out there, man. I'm not Whoa. kidding. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> no more talking about NHL and NBA, you know, just focusing on this NFL slate. I'm just kidding. We can talk about NFL and in, or in all the sports. LocksDFS.com, <laughs> every sport. NHL with Addy, NBA. Yeah, uh, man. It's, it's been tomorrow. I'm going to wake up in about eight hours from now and do college. Uh, or actually start with EPL, then college football. So, For sure. Saturday is a busy day. Then you guys have Sunday. Addy's got every day with NHL. Taylor's got every day with NBA now. We're just all going, going, going. Yeah, we're grinding. It's been a it's been a funky start to the seasons, man. A lot of a lot of weird slates for NHL. Um, just a lot of a, a lot of wacky outcomes. But uh, excited for it to ride its course. You know, I think the process is sound. I think the fact that you know it's. 1 a.m. on a Friday night and we're doing DFS work says a lot about the process. It's it's pretty sound. It's it's there. And so I think I think the I think the ship will ride itself. I'm very excited to lock in on all these sports, man. I'm excited for this grind. Yeah, it's easy to get uh to have recency bias in DFS just because one day can seem like forever, but over the course of a season, uh things turn uh turn around. Beginning of season, uh, uh, beginning of seasons are always tough in any sport because you're trying to find like a sample size, I guess, really, and then compare that to the pricing because that's really all we do in DFS. Right. There's not a lot to go off of. I mean, you go off preseason usage rate, preseason pace rates. You know, there's only so much. But then some players don't play in preseason. Some players are. You know, there's only so much you can look at until things start to formalize. Like, you know, twelve, ten, twelve games to the season, you get a better gist of things. Um, this is like the prime. I mean, this is the middle of the NFL season. We're here, honestly. Um, yeah, NFL definitely turning first full circle. Taylor, I guess looking through this week, I guess what are you thinking about this week overall as we kind of jump into this NFL slate? Yeah, I think it's really – I think it's easy for me, but I think other people are having a tough time with it. But I think there's a, a ton of mispricing on both sites. And uh, as long as Todd Gurley isn't going to be 100%, there's some edge. Because I guess I bet in cash games he'll only be like sixty percent or something, just because people are scared to pay that much for a running back. But we've seen in years past with like Le'Veon Bell and David Johnson, you kind of just gotta jam them in. And uh, I think it'll be mean. higher. I it's crazy. Higher. Yeah, I it probably will be higher. But I, the fact that it's not a hundred percent just shows you that there's still fish out there. Um, I agree. I agree. Because ever since Sean McVay has been quarterback, he's gotten no less than 18 touches in a game, and then every he's scored no less than 25 fantasy points so far this Sean year. Sean McVay at quarterback? <laughs> Did I, I say quarterback? <laughs> you know, like quarterback you coach. Really nice. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, at coach. Honestly, Sean McVay might as well be a quarterback, just the, just the same way exactly. Belichick is a quarterback of the Patriots. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> nah, yeah, I was actually looking at this interesting stat. Now that we're just talking about Gurley real quick, it's just uh, um, he's a targets, good point to start for this week. I think. I mean, targets per game. Like we already know, Gurley's a smash play. He's a lock. He's gonna run it up on the ground. But targets per game, San Francisco is looking like almost as much of a funnel as Atlanta. Yep. Atlanta. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, they still lead the league in targets per game uh, to the running back position at 10.3, but San Francisco's right behind that at 9.6. So that kind of just uh, raises Gurley's um, receiving game ceiling. And when Gurley really pops off is when that receiving game ceiling is higher than usual, which in this case it is, because you're looking at multiple ground touchdowns, maybe even an air touchdown, and uh, quite a few yards of receptions to come with that. Yeah, no, no running back or no player in the league for that matter has a higher touchdown equity in his team than Todd Gurley. It seems like, and I and when we started making YouTube videos, and if you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, go ahead and do so, please. Um, 
I was saying in like back in week three that as the weeks go on, people will realize more and more how the 49ers defense is exactly like Atlanta's in uh, giving up catches to running backs. And it's uh, coming even more so uh, through six weeks. I'll put my thing out, my take out here though. I think Todd Gurley in, let's just say the single entry $25 double up on DraftKings. I think he'll be at least 90% owned. 90% 90% really no nine there, zero and we never we never see a player hit 90 I think I will, 90 because mm, there's no one else to pay for man there's no yeah there's, I will say if there ever is a week that a player that's 9.8k will be that chalky it would be this week because there's just a plethora of value everywhere this is Every the only other one right this is the only other one out of dealing Alan Thielen is an amazing people, play, honestly. People aren't really going there, though. Like, right, people are I going agree. to these, some of these cheaper wide receivers that we'll get into. Todd Gurley is going to be, a, I think, 90% owned. I mean, I, and I think you probably still just play him. I mean, obviously still just play him. And cast yeah, him. I was, well, yeah, I was thinking. Tournaments, I think the same. Just, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, even if you're making tournament lineups, like, I feel like that's a guy who you count into your lineup. Yeah, just start. Just start there. The only way it doesn't work is if he gets hurt. And if he gets hurt, then that's just that, you know. But you probably still win cast games if he gets hurt because he's going to be that chalky. So mm-hmm. not if you're watching on YouTube, you see the DK scores 39.5, 33.3, 25.6, 28.6, 32.3, 26.7. So, yep. Yep. all right, let's kind of start from the top, though. Now that we have Gurley, I mean, we know that that's where we're at. So let's kind of go through quarterbacks um, and, and kind of go. I'll, I'll let Taylor start with where he's kind of going here. Um, to start this week. Obviously, I know that he usually likes to go cheap, so I kind of let him open it up. Sure. Yeah, I definitely like to go cheap if I can. Um, there's a ton of – usually there's only like two or three quarterbacks that I really consider, but this week it seems like there's more. Um, I really like Joe Flack for his price at 5.4K against the Saints who just have the have zero ability to get pressure on the quarterback, which uh, results in them their secondary being dead last in the league. Um, Joe Flacco is a rhythm quarterback – much like uh, Kirk Cousins to a lesser extent. Um, but with guys like Crabtree, Sneed, uh, John Brown, I think he has a really underrated uh, wide receiver core. And uh, they are favored, which is funny. But And for as much as I like the Baltimore defense, I think it's going to be like a high-scoring uh, competitive game. And I think Joe Flacco can sling it 40-plus times in that 5.4K in that matchup, um, in that usage. Yeah, I like it a lot. What do you guys think about the Ravens being favored in that game? I saw that early in the week and kind of thought, I, I don't know, I thought a lot of different things about it, but I thought mostly it was a bet against the Saints on the road, right? It kind of feels like what it is. Yeah. Um, that, that and the Ravens defense. Had, I mean, we played them last week against the Titans and got 11 sacks. Uh, their defense is crazy now with Jimmy Smith uh, fully back um, yeah. for the Ravens. That defense is, is really, really good, and I don't think people realize it just yet how good they are. Yeah, that defense is smothering. I mean, if you want any indication for how uh, amazing that defense is, Drew Brees is 5.7K, and nobody is talking about him. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That person has said a word about Drew Brees, and he is 5.7K. Like, this is like – this dude literally two weeks ago broke the passing record and uh, and, and stopped the game. Like, and they all stopped the game, and he dropped 43.54 fantasy points. Like, this, I mean, obviously it was – at at Atlanta, but I mean, 5.7 K. I mean, a case you can make for them is, is new Orleans ranked 17th in seconds, neutral pace of play. Um, Baltimore second. So it's a pace up game for new Orleans. Uh, it's a super tough matchup. No one's going to have him, but if you bank on, on, uh, on, uh, you know, surrounding group, I'm forgetting, uh, supporting cast. I mean, Drew Brees has the best, uh, as good as it gets. How dare you forget the supporting cast? It's a year, the supporting cast, Addy. Supporting cast. I don't know why I was like, (laughs) yeah, you're the supporting cast. I don't know why I tripped over my words, but 5.7K with Michael Thomas and Kamara and Mark Ingram back. It's definitely in play. Is that kind of where you're looking at quarterback or do you have other guys you're looking at? No. Is that me? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> um, uh, other no, no, actually, I, 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 I should say that I'm not really even looking at Drew Brees because I'm on the boat of I'm not targeting this uh, this uh, Baltimore pass defense. But if you're on the defenses don't matter train and you want to just take uh, advantage of that, go ahead. Like, I think that's super sharp for GPPs. Um, for me, actually, I'm looking around that range. I'm really interested in Baker at 5'8 as kind of leverage off of what I think will be Flacco Chalk. Um, Baker's interesting. I mean, he's got the a matchup that we've seen just be cake for for weeks. Um, he's really easy to stack because it should be a fairly narrow 
target distribution as far as Jarvis Landry, David Njoku. They're commanding such a massive share. Um, you know, his strengths are are, are Tampa's weakness. Tampa kind of their, – their strength, their defense is on the ground to running backs. Uh, we're going to see Nick Chubb be chalk, um, rightfully so because he's 3.6K. But if you want leverage off of that Nick Chubb chalk or maybe just double down on that Nick Chubb chalk, then you can go with uh, Baker Mayfield and, and stack him up with a wide receiver. Um, kind of on that same uh, wave of doubling down on, on with running backs, I think Jerry Goff at 6.6K is in play as well. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of Todd Gurley chalk. And like we talked about, this could be a Todd Gurley receiving explosion week. And I think I wouldn't mind doubling down with Jerry Goff in that. Uh, we've seen CJ Beathard be able to to put up points on, on respectively. So I think this game could stay closer than we think. I think it could really shoot out. Um, and J- Jerry Goff, if you want to stack him up, it gets a little easier with Cooper Cup being out. Um, kind of narrows that target distribution because I'm on I'm off Josh Reynolds personally. I, I see the case for him, but I think I'm just going to narrow his target distribution down to Gurley, Woods, and and Cooks, and and I think you could go with three of them, like um, Goff, uh, running back, and paired up with a wide receiver, and that's super in play. Yeah, uh, that makes a lot of every sense. Every week, I feel like um, there's not a lot of other teams that are in really like explosive spots like the Rams are. Like it feel and and the Rams are obviously the most dynamic team almost every week unless the Chiefs are on the slate they're right there as well, but I feel like the Rams this week like their yeah. spot is is pretty much not. <laughs> yeah, their spot is amazing. Um, I Taylor, think. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Not me. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was you. gonna say Taylor. Give. I, I feel like these other positions are way more interesting than quarterbacks. So I was gonna say Taylor. Last word on quarterback before we move on to kind of talking about those value running backs and all those guys. Mm-hmm. I'm really yeah. So I. I'm really looking – if you have our cheat sheet. Taylor's cutting out. Oh, no. He's oh, mentioning yeah. our cheat sheet on LockDFS.com. No. <laughs> I'll wait for I'm him back. to get back. There he is. Okay. I'm back. All right. Yeah. Well, anyways, yeah. So um, if, you have, if you're a member of ours and you use our cheat sheets, I had Baker as a lock so far. I'm, I'm going to update it. I still like him a ton just given the matchup. And um, I, I'm going to be pairing him up with the likes of Jarvis Landry and David Njoku likely. But I do like Cam Newton a lot at 5.9K. It just seems way too cheap. And the past years, he really took a backseat in uh, rushing the ball. But he's averaging nine rushes a game this year, which really raises his floor and upside, obviously. Um, Really involved running the ball uh, in the red zone. So I like that. Um, I know the Eagles' defense is really, really tough, uh, a top three defense in the league. But they're really susceptible against the pass. And – if they they're really good at getting pressure on quarterbacks who are immobile, and Cam Newton's quite the opposite of that. So I think at five point nine k, the upside is just way too high to just ignore. Um, don't know if I'm going to go there in cash games, but the floor seems really high to me. Uh, does does quarterback pricing? Because I just noticed that Cam is the lowest pricing price he is this this entire year. Like this is the lowest price he's been at five point nine. Mm-hmm. You feel like quarterback pricing? I'm only looking at DraftKings. Like I've only looked at DraftKings, but. Is, does it feel soft this week? Like in general, it feels like prices are kind of low. Or no? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it feels a little soft. I mean, you see like a lot of big names priced down, like Breeze and Deshaun Watson, right. Matt Stafford. I think that's kind of what makes it look. But they do have matchups that warrant them being priced down there. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But they're I'm, honestly, I think. But it makes they, me want to play them, though. It makes me want to play oh, them. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So I think defenses don't awesome. matter then, right? I mean, I think defenses do matter, but defenses are already factored into the price. And I don't think that's yeah. talked about enough. Right. It's already factored in. So it, uh, it does matter, but, I mean, this is a price game. So it's not like it ma- – it's all in context, you know. So I think – I think that, that argument goes for every sport, by the way. Uh, I think it's 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 sport. less in the NFL, to be honest. I agree. This, this is like a harsh week in terms of matchups. Like to see Breeze all the way down there is really interesting. But that's a whole different discussion, honestly. We should move on. Right. Uh, I think just to not to drag the quarterback position on, uh, because I think we did a good job talking about it, but I think both options in this uh, Chicago-New England game are also in play, Trubisky versus Brady. Um, Khalil Mack is questionable with an ankle injury. He's probably going to play. But if he's limited, which he looks like he is, he looks like Gimpy, uh, we could see Tom Brady eat in this matchup. I mean – He's fully – I mean, his supporting cast is is fully healthy. We talked about the year of the supporting cast. Josh Gordon is fully healthy, playing full snaps. 
Gronk is healthy. Even Hogan looked like he was back. Michelle is running well. Edelman is back. Um, this game could easily shoot out. I think we'll see um, Matt Nagy or Nagy. How do you say his name? Nagy? Nagy. 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 I, think, I, I think we'll see him go to the air. Similar, like, similar game plan as they had versus Tampa Bay. I think they'll try and exploit New England's uh, deficiencies rushing the quarterback and, and containing the pass game. So I think Trubisky and his weapons are really in play. I really, really like the idea of pairing Trubisky with Tariq Cohen. Um, the, a way that could go poorly is if is if Nagy comes out here and tries to establish the run um, and keep and keep uh, Brady off the field. So that is the risk. But I think a, a really interesting stack is Trubisky to Tariq Cohen. I love that stack. Um, but we can move on after that. Yeah, let's go to let's go to running backs. Taylor, I guess obviously we've got Gurley at running back. Um, and I just wanted to pull up Tariq Cohen right there. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Just I mean the targets. Anytime they're gonna trail. He he honestly becomes their number one wide receiver. Right. Like, so um, I think this is a game they will be tra- trailing. I think we've talked about. Um, we saw we saw Chicago's defense show leaks to Brock Osweiler. Um, if that carries over, Tom Brady will rip them apart if they don't fix whatever issues they were having in that game. And on the chance that that happens, like if they fall behind by a couple touchdowns, Tariq Cohen is going to put up a, a monster monster stat line. Um, Taylor, kind of where are you starting a running back behind Gurley? Uh, so I think a lot of people are going to go with Nick Chubb. Um, but given the game script that I'm expecting, I think I'm going to just pay a couple hundred more for Duke Johnson just because but, – but Right, real quick before we get into that Cleveland situation, are you planning on basically going down to the second running back position in general? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. I, I think I'm going to pay down for one running back and then – like low, low, like 4K for one running back and then 4K for a receiver. And then um, it, since I have Gurley in the – get, uh, We lost him. I mean, just to pick up the thought, though. I think I that's think... a chalky bet. Okay. Yeah, going Gurley in the cheap running back, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Especially since this, since this opened up, I think that's, that is probably going to be where people go, right? Right, yeah. I think there's a lot of interesting value on the slate, and I think there's a lot of fadable value on the slate as well. So that kind of – because there's good value and there's bad value. Um, and I think the the edge is going to come in distinguishing that, as it does every week. But there's some chalk here that I really like, some cheap chalk here that I really do like. Yeah, you've seen in the past weeks uh, when Carlos Hyde was uh, still a Brown. Um, when they get behind, they kind of just abandon the run and then just pass the entire time. Um I don't think they're going to use him in the same exact role as they did with Hyde. I Well, I think they will, but it'll be to a lesser extent. I think Duke Johnson's going to have a big uptick in um, in carries. Uh, and then, obviously, he's going to be in the passing game uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, Jarvis Landry and Joku combined for like a 49% target share. And then uh, Duke Johnson's right behind them. So there's a chance, there's a chance um, that I play all three in cash. Uh, I haven't really thought about that as much. Um, Jarvis Landry's priced up quite a bit on DraftKings, but on FanDuel, he's only 6.5K. So I think on FanDuel, he's a lock. DraftKings, I don't know. But, yeah, just to get back on the Duke Johnson point, sure. um, I, I'm i pretty sure they're going to be behind the entire game, um, if not competitive. And they have been bumping up his role a bit in the passing game in uh, these past. I, I guess one one question I want to ask about the Tampa Bay, the, the narrative that Cleveland's going to be down in this game. And I, I do think that they're the lesser team in this game. But I, I feel like Cleveland's defense isn't really getting respect this week. I feel like people are assuming that Tampa Bay is just going to crush. And uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's a tough spot uh, for this defense um, going to Tampa. Uh, Jameis looked really good uh, engineering that offense versus Atlanta. Uh, he threw a couple it's picks. Atlanta, it's Atlanta, though. Yeah, it is Atlanta, but he did look good. Um, he had he was targeting Deshaun Jackson, which opens up this offense. He has connections with his with his uh sort of fringe players like Adam Humphrey, uh, Cameron Bray, OJ Howard. He really gets them involved as well. So he does a good job of spreading it out and sort of putting up points. I think uh, I think the team total is fair, but I think that is the case in fading Nick Chubb. The fact that. If you do think they fall behind, Nick Chubb uh, could just fall right out of the game plan. I mean, this guy has one target on the year, so he could easily fall out of the game plan. Um, and Duke Johnson could take over. So I definitely, I definitely think uh, that's going to kind of be where, where, 
everyone's going to have to make that decision on Nick Chubb or that running game and where to target in that game. And I, I, that's going to probably end up being the, the big deciding fact, like the big question on this slate, you know, because roster yeah, cause construction I, goes from there. Cause um, I could see both of them. I could see scenarios where uh, one of them has a big game and the other one kind of falls off. So uh, that's really going to, it seems like it could make or break the slate. Cause I feel like one of the guys is going to dominate. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and, um, so yeah, just to give my take on that sort of Cleveland game, just to take a stand on it, I am kind of leaning towards the passing game options. Um, I think I may go with fading this Chubb chalk. Uh, it sort of depends where we end up, like just how chalky I think he's going to be. That also is going to have influence in it. But but right now, and I, I I already talked about it, but at the running back position, I really am interested in Tariq Cohen at five point one k. Um, he's not much more. He's fifteen hundred more. Um, I think I'd rather kind of go in that range. Can we pause um, one sec? Just just in case like people on this podcast don't catch up with news. I feel like we don't do enough news like updates on this podcast. Because I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of people don't keep up with news. But obviously, Carlos Hyde was traded to the Jaguars this week. So that, yep. that's why we're talking about Chubb here at 3.6K. Um, why he's going to be chalk. If you're looking at this on Sunday morning, you probably already know that. But if you're looking at this on Saturday, you might not have heard that yet. So just a heads up. That's why we're looking at Duke Johnson. That's why we're looking at Chubb more uh, with, I guess, a uh, – you know, a uh, 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 finer light, I guess, maybe if you want to say. But anyway, let's let's kind of go up from there, I guess, because that, that's the kind of the bottom of the barrel, right? I mean, there's no one there's no one down there with those. No, guys. there's so, no one cheaper than Chubb, and even Chubb is a little sus. He he kind of he kind of reeks of bad chalk a little bit. I can feel that. Yep. Yeah. In my original in the my like preliminary build up right now, I have Gurley, Cohen, and Duke Johnson. So yeah, those we'll are. It's just like, I'd, yeah. One more note on Chubb is the guys, um, good guys to fade if you think they're going to be chalk are guys that have no pass game usage, like running backs who have no pass game usage. Their upside is capped with touchdowns. And so it's like, uh, if Nick Chubb doesn't spring a massive run, which obviously he's capable of doing, we've seen, we've seen him do it once. Like, um, but if he doesn't do that, then he could bust hard. Like, it could be like a, you know, even if he gets like 80 yards on the ground, that's only eight points. If he does not, if he's not doing anything, if he doesn't get in the end zone, yeah, it's uh, and we've seen the Bucks. The Bucks are really susceptible to the passing game, even to running backs. Uh, mm-hmm. They're like, I don't, how are they on the ground? Um, they're good. Against, they're, they're good versus running backs. Yeah, they, I knew that they were a little better than um, middle of the road. So, yeah. I it, if people are gonna go to Chubb, then I'm very excited because yeah, they, they rank good better they rank 30th in the league versus uh running backs they give up the third most uh yards per game to running backs um so duke johnson's def this it would it would be in the the browns typically don't do the right thing but if they were to do the right thing in this situation it would be to their benefit to to use to use duke johnson kind of like kind of like uh the bears used Tariq cohen to rip him to rip apart uh, the bucks in that same sort of role I just want to. I just want to. I mean, I don't know what. I don't know which side of this argument I fall on quite yet. But I just want to make the argument for Chubb that Coach Speak is hundred percent there. Duke Johnson has been getting fifty percent of the snaps. And he's been producing this. Uh, yeah, Chubb is a guy who's, who does has been doing a lot with his touches. If you believe in the Cleveland defense, if you believe that they keep the game close, I think Chubb widely leads in touches. And this guy who's extremely talented, who's going to be extremely chalk. So just think about that when you're making an optimal lineup. That's all I'm saying. Right, right. And the Bucks defense is missing Gerald McCoy, if we didn't mention that. He is sort of their primary uh uh I mean he's 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 he pa- he rushes the passer a lot, but uh he he is vital in that in that run defense. So I mean let's not act like fading Chubb Chalk could make us sick. Like that could make us very sick. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And I'm not even I'm not I don't want to be the guy who's saying like I'm fading Chubb on Saturday uh, Friday night. Like I right. it, a lot is gonna I'll, be great. I'll say it. I'll say it. Wow, I'm fading bro. Chubb. You're, I mean, he's just so talented. It's That's just, the one thing just, that keeps me on. Uh, he, he's a fucking running back. All running backs are pretty much the same. It's I mean, it's, just, it's, such a, it's such a hype play. Like, hey, we've seen this all the time. I, feel you. I, I do understand the argument. I really do. I really, really do. I feel both sides of it. It's so tough for me. If he, uh, wasn't, if he wasn't a talented running back, then I would get it. But he just feels like, I don't know. feels like, I, I, but I'm, always, I'm always buying the Browns. I'm always buying the Browns for some reason. Yeah, I, I always mean, feel like I find myself there. I like it. I like it. I mean, this we're, we're going to end up with browser on a period. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, but I like it. I, I like the stand against Chubb Taylor for what it's worth. Like, yeah, I, I like the strong stance against him. I'm not. I'm. I'm too. I'm too. Uh, I don't have the stones for it, but <laughs> but uh, I like the call. We talked about Tariq Cohen a little bit, so you guys. Tariq Cohen's a, an awesome player. The idea with that. Do we want to talk more about it? But we kind of. I, I no, feel like. No, no need to talk more. Cool, about yeah, it. it kind of makes sense. I mean, no, let's go to wide receiver. Let's go to wide let's receiver. Go to wide receiver and the best. The best player. Yeah, yeah, the best value on the players. slate. If you guys want more running back players? If yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do the cheat sheet, but yeah, we can touch on a few. Nah, guys, dude, like... we can't give away all our players. Yeah, we can't give them all away, Addy. Come on, we no, gotta... for sure. But just, just to inca- just to cover up the. Addy, players. you're gonna have your own video. Come on, you gotta tell Addy's action. True. I mean, Addy's action will be out around the same time. <laughs> this, this is out. I mean, I talk about GPP plays, but we should run down the position. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? What else? I mean, I mean, there is a big mid-range here from 5.1K to Zeke Elliott of 8.1. I mean, yeah. I mean, just to run it down, man, Alvin Kamara is going to be 1% owned despite being in the exact same role as he was last year. Um, and he proved serviceable last year. Uh, and literally nobody's going to own him. So if you are fading Gurley, you should probably play Kamara or Zeke, one or the other. I'm not going to them, uh, either one of them. They're both road dogs. Uh, the case to make for both of them is that they both have passing game upside when they are trailing. So um, Kamara actually succeeds in that role. So I could definitely this, uh, see this being a Kamara game. Like we talked about, it's a big pace-up game for the, for the Saints, which is kind of like an awesome spot for them. Um, I'm not really on McCaffrey. Uh, real, real quick, bef- as we talk about these these high price guys, I just I feel like we haven't talked about the receivers yet. But Taylor was kind of hinting to it. There's a lot of value at receiver, and he's excited to talk about it. And mm-hmm. that's kind of the reason you can fit these guys like Kamara, Zeke, or McCaffrey as we yeah. kind of go down the list. It's possible to do it. Um, yeah. Just kind of a heads up there. Yeah, I, I'm just touching on him. I'm not going here in this range, but. The fact that I'm not going here, I don't think a lot of people are going here. So um, if you do want to differentiate your lineup, it's good to differentiate it, differentiate it with good players. And these are all really good players. So um, I, I, I'm, there's a case to be made for all of them. I'm not on any of those Jacksonville guys. Uh, the situation is just kind of murky. I think James White is kind of priced up. Um, so I think those top three, you can make a case for any one of them as a GPP play for sure. It is pretty. It is, it's pretty crazy how gross the top – the, the top of running back became like James White at his price. Not a whole lot of interest in that. Jacksonville, that's murky. Mark mm-hmm. Ingram's got a really tough matchup. Um, so you really got these two top guys in Gurley. Like you know, yeah. If yeah. you're not if you're not going there, you're pretty much you're go, you're going down to Cohen. You know, like it's. I mean, that's that's what's there. gonna lead. That's what's gonna lead to the Chub Chalk is, mm-hmm. is exactly what you just said. So um, yeah. Yeah. And, and we're gonna and we're gonna talk about receivers. So I guess we can kind of go there. Let's. Who do you want to plug? Let's just go with the Duke. Let's just plug it. I'm making the lineup if you're watching on YouTube. So I, I plugged in Flacco. I plugged in Gurley. I plugged in Duke Johnson so far. Um, and now we're a wide receiver. So do we want to start at the top or do we want to start with the value? Taylor, I kind of let you go with where you want to go. Well, there's one. The best wide receiver on the slate is only six point nine k. And that's DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, the guy has a twenty nine percent usage rating. Uh, we've seen uh, in the past two games usage he's rating. absolutely rating. This man, usage <laughs> rating. This man's been playing too much basketball. Target share twenty nine percent target. Share. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Twenty nine percent target share uh, for for uh, the Texans, and he's facing um, Jalen Ramsey. You saw that the last two games he's averaged nineteen fantasy points a game versus them on like twenty four targets. Um, Will Fuller, he's a speed player. He's got a hamstring issue, and speed players with hamstring issues it doesn't really work out. So he's just out there as a decoy. His uh, his targets have been taking a, a massive hit. Uh, only three targets the last two games. It's really just uh, QT and uh, Hopkins, and Hopkins is really just out there uh, balling. And uh, I and it seems like. Uh, since the Texans took a backseat last week or like a step back against the Bills, um, it seemed to be because of Deshaun Watson's chest uh, that he was questionable all week with, but he got a full a couple of full practices in this week. So I think he's healthy. And I think it, it's Hopkins is 8.5 K on FanDuel, which is where he should be. 6.9 K is ridiculous. He should be like in the eight Ks. Please take advantage of it. There's really no reason to fade him. Um, I'll talk. They get, nah, dude. Defense, dude. He torches Jalen Ramsey every time. I feel you. No, you I feel you. I love Jalen Ramsey. Ramsey. The, the price is crazy. The pr- fact that you can get DeAndre Hopkins for six point nine k is crazy. 
Mm-hmm. Like for sure. I'm not going to argue against that. Like that's, that's All right, a, what's your argument then? My argument is just the Rams versus San Francisco. <laughs> that's really the argument for me. <laughs> oh, for that's going, it. what? Uh, I mean, either what? of them without Cooper Cup, I feel like they're interested. I mean, but look at the target shares. I mean, Josh Rams is really going to step in and, and have pretty much the same role as Cooper Cup. He plays the same position. Right. Really play, have the same play style. So going to play all the fucking snaps. Uh, have all no, the I, I don't think so. I think actually they're going to move Robert Woods into the slot. Um, and I think Cooper Cup's <laughs> or Cooper Cup typically mans that slot role. Well, I think Woods is <laughs> moving to the slot. He moved to the slot after Cup got hurt. So I think uh, – that's why I'm off Reynolds, man. I think they sacrificed Reynolds to Richard Sherman, who's been back to his shutdown days this this season. Um, I think they sacrificed Reynolds on the left side, and I think they keep Brandon Cooks on the right and Woods in the side. And I'm confident in that because it's Sean McVay. And I, so I kind of know he's going to do that. Like, Yeah, you would imagine he would do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, everyone thought Richard Sherman was dust before the season started. He's kind yeah. of uh, proved everyone wrong. Mm-hmm. so far um he's back and uh richard sherman i mean the only kind of wide receiver he really struggles with is that like of the tyreek hill kind of mold the marquis goodwin kind of mold the speedsters um and that is not josh reynolds he's not he, he runs not he's like a four five forty guy he's not that he's not I mean, he's like the, he's like the same player as cooper cup right i i, I think this i think they're sacrificing him and i mean like jared goff threw a pass to uh, Josh Reynolds when he checked into the game for Cooper Cup. It bounced off his face and got picked. So I, I think, like, they're kind of – I think he'll step into that role as far as timeshare-wise, but I don't know as far as target-wise. I think they're going to just pepper Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks. And I was, was going to say, I mean, this is obviously a full slate. And I, I, I feel like a lot of times on Sundays I end up playing these afternoon slates. Um, a lot of times, regrettably, <laughs> but um, <laughs> the move has been to just stack the Rams, and and especially with Cooper Cup out, I feel like this is a, this is just jam the Rams week. It's the move. Don't oh, overthink God. it. I mean, it makes sense. It makes so, especially on a slate where there's a Saints or a, in a negative matchup. Yeah, Patriots are in a negative matchup. Don't right? overthink it. It's beautiful because we've seen the Rams defense give up big scores, big points. We've and we just saw CJ Beathard move and the, off, can move move the, the offense really well. Like it's like, dude, don't overthink this. You know, don't get cute with it. Just play, play the guys whose teams are gonna go off in great spots. You know, but Hopkins, Hopkins is still a great play. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue against that. That's a tough decision to make right there, I mean, especially because you've got Cooks and Woods. Both. You could take a screenshot of like. Cooks, Woods, and Hopkins, and that right there is your defenses don't matter debate. You know, like that right there. Like it, what side you fall on dictates who you play. Defenses matter. You play uh the or you play Cooks and Woods. Defenses don't matter. You play DeAndre Hopkins. You know, that's where it is. But uh, it's like the uh, target. It's like the target share. Yeah, that's the, that's the biggest the, argument is the twenty eight percent. The top, ta- yeah. 29. But, yeah, I mean, and in a week's past, it's been over 30%. That 1% is everything. I mean, 41% of bets on the over in that Texans game. The team totals dropped from 43 to 41. The Texans down from 19.5 to 18.5. So, I think the 13-point the but- differential in, in team total – over <laughs> that over does it for the target show to me. I think I how got many, it. uh, how many Hopkins, how many points did Hopkins get last week? Because they only scored well. like he did they well. didn't score very much at all. Yeah, he did well 17 points, 19 points, and 20 points in the last two weeks 26.1 and 17.3 DK points. It's a solid score. It's a solid score. Um, real quick, so I mean, are there other guys at the top we're looking at, or is it just those two? It's just those two we're looking at, Woods and Hopkins. Oh, I mean, no. Obviously, not- Cooks is a Ram, so, I mean, he's in play, but. No, I yeah. The top. I mean, I mean, Thielen has a great yeah, match. I, mean, I, I think I I'm going to let Thielen. Taylor talk about Thielen, though. I think, I think Taylor, uh, I'm going to let you have that one. I'm going to talk about Jarvis Landry instead. Um, he's 7,300. Uh, he is priced up on DraftKings, but, again, DraftKings is a, is a PPR site, and that's like a Jarvis Landry. That's everything for him. I mean, the targets are there. The A dot is what hasn't been there with Baker Mayfield, um, but I'm not too worried about it. I think that's sort of just an, an anomaly. I don't think that'll last. Um, I mean, Baker called him the best wide receiver in football, man. He said he's going to get him the ball. I, I do believe- think I, I will argue against that. I will argue against the fact that I do think Baker is a, is like a short – like I think that's where his bread and butter is going to be for the time being. But I do think that this offense will open up against against in this matchup. I think oh, that, yeah. that's the reason why I like Landry. 
When, and, and Baker got in fairly unlucky too. I don't have the stats on it, but I was reading about it. Um, how about how he's been he's been hampered by his receivers dropping very catchable balls and a bunch of a bunch of uh, factors kind of not associated to him. So he's kind of like a pitcher in baseball who's due to regress positively. So I, I think uh, I think I, I really like the idea of fading Chub Chalk for actual good players like Jarvis Landry and David Njoku and guys like that. Um, but you want to talk about Thielen Taylor, like at all? I, I mean, like I, do we, I play Thielen seemingly every week. He's been the most underrated player this year, and people still don't really give him respect. He's been averaging was he averaged twenty eight point five fantasy points a game? I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's literally ridiculous. Games, <laughs> they can't. The game script never matters because he's just an extension of the run game, and they can't run all at all. So. I don't know. He's amazing. And people just fade him every week. I'm not going to play him this week just because of how roster construction shakes out. But definitely, if I was playing GPPs, I would throw him in a ton. I think uh, in GPPs, there's merit to fading Gurley for him and then fitting, like, it's just a strategy to go and then play, pay for the higher price running backs. But because I think there's a chance, there's a good chance that Thielen scores the same as Todd Gurley. Well, that's what I'm I mean, do we want to just want to, for the podcast sake, do we just want to make a team where we just damn jam Thielen? Let's just sure. like. I mean, because let's let's jump now. I mean, I mean, I'm, let's just let, a, can we skip the, the can we skip the mid range and, and um, leave no no we let's can't. talk about Jarvis and then go down. yeah Jarvis of course. I mean that's not mid range we are oh, talking I'm, about Jarvis We're talking no about I'm not talking about Jarvis I'm just yeah, talking, I'm talking about, about Bradtree and John Brown I don't yeah talk about yeah yeah but just real quick on Thielen though before we just diss him or ditch him um Gang Green uh they're missing three secondary starters Tremaine Johnson Buster Scrine Marcus May. So that's three key guys out. Already a bad pass defense for I mean, the Jets. Yeah. They're like they not. Good, they got a good front seven, but that that they're they're they got a good front seven, but they're middling in pressure. They're in the middle of the league as far as pressure on the quarterback is concerned. Um, one interesting thing is is Thielen actually becomes a nut play when Kirk Cousins is going to be under a lot of pressure because he just tosses it to Adam Thielen. He may not be under a lot of pressure in this game, so uh, you could get Stephon Diggs. It could be a Stephon Diggs week. Um, with that being said, because the matchup is just as good for him as well. Um, but yeah, I think now we can kind of just stop talking about the high price guys. But these mid price guys, like five k range, we uh, we we should talk about them for sure. Um, yeah, I think uh, two of the top plays on the slate are on the same team: Crabtree and John Brown, and it pairs well with uh, Joe Flacco. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, John Brown is third in the league in air yards. Um, just behind DeAndre Hopkins and Julio Jones. And like I said earlier, the reason why the Saints are so bad against the pass is because they have they lack so, – like they can't get any pressure on the quarterback. And if you give a guy like John Brown time to get open, he's going to get open. He's a 19.7 A dot. Um, his targets took a hit last week when I played him. That was nice. He only had three. I think they game planned uh, to get Willie Sneed the ball more last week, but – I think this is the time to go back to it just because um, he still has like a 19% target share on the this season. Is the John, this is like John Brown week. This is Yeah, this, this is like God. the most nut. I, I think I would play John Brown this week. I think yeah. I would reserve it for GPPs. Um, just John because, Brown? Yeah, just John because Crabtree. for me. John Brown cash. No, nah, it's me. because Crabtree is just such a so much safer. <laughs> He, I feel like you're saying. He, I think John Brown's a catch play as well. I saw on that side, but and it's because I think this three targets is just out of like this is not. That's not even why. That's not even why. It's just Crabtree has a higher target share, and the only reason that he wasn't having uh, big weeks the weeks before is because he was dealing with so many drops. Last week he didn't have any drops. That's a good um, point. And his uh, role in the red zone is just so prevalent. Even though John Brown's role in the red zone is very underrated. Um, just because he is so small, people don't wouldn't think he'd be good in the red zone. But um, he is. Yeah, I think he has three touchdowns. It's um, tough between those two in general, like every week. Yeah, uh, if you're playing GPP, you have to have some teams with Joe Flacco, Crabtree, and John Brown for sure. For sure, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, but yeah, I think it's. I like the point you made about drops. That's actually a really good point because his his this is a guy who really like he does kind of struggle with drops, but not as much as he was. 
Um, so that's like a good point as far as him regressing positively. I think I'm going with John Brown because he's one of those guys that kind of like, despite him showing his low floor last week, he doesn't really, he, he typically has a fairly good floor um, if he gets mm-hmm. the targets and he will get the targets in this game. The issue in that game was that they jumped ahead 21, nothing. There was no need to throw like the ball. Like fast. It was like really in fast. the first, it was like in the first quarter, it seemed like. And in, in, in hindsight, that was kind of predictable. I guess we should have predicted that. Um, I just expected Tennessee to be a little more competent on offense, but, man, they were dreadful. So. They were on the road in that game, though, right? Um, yeah, they were on the road. So they're at home this nah, week. No, they were at home. Tennessee was at home. But, yeah, uh, Tennessee was at home, right. That's what I'm saying. Baltimore's oh, at yeah. home. Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, a, yeah. a home team is more prone to stuff. You know what's funny? Um, the Ravens had 11 hits on quarterback, and all 11 of them – Eleven of them were for sex. That's <laughs> that is pretty wild. Every time they got to him, that's him. wild. Um, I put Crabtree in for the sake of the video, but should we should we reserve the spot? Do we have two cheap receivers down here? You guys are interested in? Um, yeah, for sure. There's should, a couple more guys I'd like two, to talk should about. Should we reserve the two receivers? Spot? Not we have Teal. No, try to Thielen. try to keep in Crabtree or. Okay, let's well, keep Crabtree then to save money since we'll we have to. We'll try to make it work. Yeah, let's try yeah. to make it work. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right. Um, one guy I'll talk about a little bit cheaper than Crabtree that I like, and, and no one's really talking about him, um, which I kind of understand, I guess, but I really like Taylor Gabriel. He's 4.7K. Um, this is the guy who's kind of taken over the Tyreek Hill role for Matt Nagy. I've said his name way too much this podcast. No, you're good. You're good. Whatever I love reason. Taylor Gabriel, by the way. This is a good call. Yeah, I mean, he's taking over the role. No one's talking about him. I mean, he's second on the team in air yards. Uh, sec- he leads the team in receiving yards. Um, second in A dot, 10.9. That's a solid range as far as upside and floor goes. Second on the team in targets. Um, and he's really efficient with his targets. I think this is a game where he could get like seven, eight targets, and he could definitely bust a big one. Um, and, and no one's really talking about him because there are other really good plays in this range. Um I think Taylor, if you want to take the guy that I think we're both thinking of, but there's uh, a lot more guys down here, I think. But yeah, yeah, go. I mean, I know I mentioned Josh Reynolds earlier, but I don't, I don't actually really like him at all. Um, Good. In that, in that range, it's more of Jermaine Curse. Just, just for the Cooper Cup being out opens up the slot for Josh Reynolds. That's why we're talking about him. Well, sure. yeah, yeah, like Josh Addy Reynolds. Taylor talked or Addy talked about. He might not be in the slot, but it opens yeah, up the receiver spot. He definitely won't, not. Josh Reynolds. Yeah, spot. definitely not going to be. Um, but, yeah, I do like Jermaine Kearse. Uh, I At the beginning of the year, I was playing a noon one pretty much every week. Super underpriced. And he was priced at where Jermaine Kearse is now. And Jermaine Kearse now has his role with Anunua out. Uh, we saw when Anunua, uh was ruled out last week, um, he had 10 targets. Really efficient with him. Nine catches for 94 yards. Um, Minnesota defense, uh, ever since – the NFC championship game last year has just been against the Eagles. They've just been pretty broken. They're definitely uh, pretty overrated at this, at this point. Um, I like Jermaine curse a lot at 4.1 K. I I feel like his target share is going to be 23, 24% um, or more this week. I like him a lot. Any argument against curse in the lineup that would, that'll give us a deal. And Um, no, I I, I love curse. Uh, He's going to avoid Xavier Rhodes in the slot. Um, the Vikings lost Mike Hughes, their rookie slot cornerback. He was he was good for them. Now they got uh, Mackenzie Alexander in there. He's gonna get ripped apart. Um, Jermaine Curse, I love it. I love that call. That's like that's that's the guy that I was thinking of when when I was saying that. So other cheap tight uh, tight ends, wide receivers in that in that four K range. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I think you got to make a case for uh, whichever Browns secondary receiver you want, whether that be Antonio Callaway. Um, the problem with Antonio Callaway is he sucks. Yeah, I'm about to say he just sucks. <laughs> That's the problem. He's, awful, man. he's yeah. incredibly inefficient with his targets. He just drops everything. <laughs> and it doesn't it doesn't help that his A dot is so deep as well. So he's just a mess. They were already trying to get him out of the offense to give snaps to Rashard Higgins. The fact that Rashard Higgins is out opens up a, a route for Damian Ratley to be very viable. I mean, just to keep uh, to be completely honest, I think Ratley is a way better play than Josh Reynolds. Um, I mean, he had eight targets, six. He caught six of them, 82 yards. Baker Mayfield showed that he's comfortable targeting him. Um, I think he's another good pivot because he's the exact same price as Nick Chubb. So if you're rolling with the passing game over the running game, just go Ratley over Chubb straight up. And I think that's a, that's a really sharp move as well. Yeah, the thing that I struggle with with playing Ratley um, 
Well, no, I while I do like Ratley as a play, is that especially on FanDuel um, and on DK, I think I'm already going to – I think I already have two Browns locked in um, with Duke Johnson and David Njoku. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys want to move over to tight end. Yeah. I was going to say real quick, just while we're on – I guess, yeah, I guess go ahead and with Njoku. I'll ask a question after Njoku. Go ahead, Jack. Uh, one, more, one, more, one more thing on wide receiver before we move oh, go on. Ahead, go ahead. Just real quick. Um, Marquise Goodwin isn't priced according to his blow-up game, so he is underpriced at 4.6K versus a Rams defense uh, that we just talked about. This game should shoot out. Um, if Bethard is looking to get him more involved, then, like, uh, I love I love Marquise Goodwin. And for the same reason, I think Pierre Garçon at the same price range. I think he's 4.8 um, or 4.5. Oh, yeah, he's 4.5. Um, I think he's in play as well. I mean, people were talking about how he was a guy to buy low air yards wise last week. Nothing has really changed this week. Um, standard limited in practice stuff. He's going to play. Um, and he's got just as good of a matchup as, as anyone in the secondary. So I like the call. Since, since we already have paused here to talk before we talk about Njoku, which should already make sense that we've talked about that game quite a bit, but I feel like we haven't talked – if you are – I mean, this is obviously a spot where we like the Browns and for a certain reason we like the Browns passing because we think they're going to be down, because we think they're going to trail. Is there a guy on the Bucks that if you're trying to game stack that you guys want to get in your lineup, whether that be any position, if you guys are trying to game stack that game, who are you guys kind of looking at? It would like only be – about the Bucks at all. It would only be Jameis Winston. Um, just because I think it's underrated how uh, how good his supporting cast is with Mike Evans, with Deshaun Jackson, O.J. Howard, Cameron Bray. Um, Adam Hum- Humphreys, Chris Godwin, uh, they're really deep everywhere. It's hard to pin one guy down. While Mike Evans is always going to lead the team in uh, target share, it's really not as high as years past. Uh, so I think I would just get Jameis Winston. And they have zero running game, so it's just going to be <laughs> wins. It-, it feels like the smart thing to do is just to play Winston. And he is in play at 6.3K, I will say that. Yeah. If you if you do want to run it back, I like Deshaun Jackson though. I mean, uh, we there's like a stigma against Winston and Jackson because people think there's not a connection there. But he led them in air yards in this game. Uh, he had 77 yards receiving, but 180 air yards. He led them in targets, and uh, Mike Evans is probably going to be shadowed by Denzel Ward, who's kind of like the Browns shut down rookie cornerback. He's so been good this year. I think if you want to run it back, I think Deshaun Jackson is an awesome play as well. Um, really right, similar to John Brown for me. Really similar. Let's wrap it up real quick with tight end in defense. I put Radley in the flex here, but we don't have to put him there. Just let's keep. But uh, just throw in Njoku, and yeah, that's not a bull take at all. Just because uh, he's going to be the chalkiest tight end ever. But, but and let's. We're good. What? Go oh, go ahead. No, no, you're good. My bad. <laughs> in the past three weeks, you've seen his targets uh, rise each week, seven, seven, then 10, then 12 last week, really involved in the red zone, uh, getting a touchdown last week at the end of the game. And you saw when uh, plays break down, he really looks for Njoku because uh, they were down uh, big last last week and he got like all of his points in garbage time and if you think the game goes similarly where they're down, uh, I feel like Jarvis Landry, Njoku, Duke Johnson are just going to have massive games and he's only 4.2 K over here. And I think he's like 5.8 K on FanDuel. So really cheap. Um, I know Addy's going to want to talk about Zach Ertz, but mm-hmm. uh, if but, I wasn't, if I wasn't paying for Njoku and roster construction was different for me, I'd be going with Zach Ertz. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tampa just to, just to beat the point home for Njoku. They are, they were, they give up 98.8 yards per game to tight ends, which is dead last in the league by, about 10 yards so yeah, good margin yeah they they get shredded by the tight end so I really I love Njoku um and I love the double stack with Baker and anyone else on that Browns offense as well um but yeah I just want to talk about Zach Ertz because I mean like if this was a wide receiver at 7.1k he would be extremely in play I mean yep. this is a, this uh Carolina defense ranks I think 28th in the league versus tight ends they've been giving it up I think like any time a quarterback is passing to the middle of the field versus Carolina, there's like this crazy success rate for them. Um, and that's where Zach Ertz runs all his routes. I mean, this guy's getting – I mean, well, this last game was his last uh, first game with single-digit targets, and that too was at nine. Um, this is a guy who's due for extreme positive touchdown regression. He gets red zone targets uh, a plenty, yet he only has two touchdowns on the season. 
Um, he's going he's gonna to explode one of these weeks for two, three touchdowns, and I want him that week. And this seems kind of like a doable week to pay up at tight end. Gronk is kind of looking gross uh, just as a player. He looks old and slow and weird, um, except for at the end. I mean, he looked good at the end, but um, he's, he's kind of he's, – he's being used as a blocker more than we expected. But I think if you're paying up, Zach Ertz makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of good, cheap wide receivers here with Curse. Um, and, you know, John Brown, that, that kind of range, Marquise Goodwin, that I think you can pay up at tight end pretty comfortably um, and get, get that edge on people, man. Like, and you can go double tight end as well with Ertz and Njoku. I have no problem with that as well. Yeah, those are really the only tight ends I'm looking at. It's, it's just kind of obvious. One, Yo, throw, throw in a defense. Let's see what we can do. For sure. One, one last guy at tight end that you can play is George Kittle as well for the same reason. Um, temp, uh, or my bad, the Rams rank 27th in the league versus the tight end. They give it up uh, yardage wise to the to that position. Yeah, funnel, um, funnel. And yeah, they funnel they funnel targets there. So I mean, George Kittle, he has that quarterback connection with CJ Beathard, so he's he's super in play as well. Um. Okay. Yeah. Let's plug in a defense. I've been kind of waiting to see what this flex. Taylor, who are you kind of looking at? Who are you looking at a defense? You should plug in. Mm, I haven't really. It depends on what I'll end up in with uh, throwing the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Um. That's a good call. I'll give you one right here. The Bills. Mm. The Bills versus. It's really not that bad. It's not bad, bro. The Bills defense is good. I'm telling you. I'll pass. I mean, they're not good, but they're, nah, they're they're pretty they're decent. And also, uh, Andrew Luck's receivers suck like real bad. It's a it's Ty a- Hilton's coming back. Um. But, yeah, I mean, the Bills are a good defense. I'd rather play them at home. I mean, the offense is not going to move anywhere. They're going to be starting the field position. For yeah. the field. Yo, throw in, throw in John Brown. Let's see what D we can get. Jay Brown. Smokey, 3.1K. We can get a good defense there. We can get the Redskins. That game's going to be pretty low scoring. It's mm. tough, man. I, I think I'll just go with like maybe the Texans here at two. Yeah, or the Texans, bro. <laughs> Bortles looks awful. Bortles, Bortles does look yeah. bad. We talked. We talked about the over under dropping on that game, despite only forty one percent of bets on the over. So that's definitely a good spot. Um, I like the Eagles call though. I mean, the the Panthers so opened twenty point five and they dropped to nineteen point seven five. The Eagles should not be two point six k for the way they pressure the quarterback. Like. That's just – that's, like, what you're looking for when you play defense, pressure on the quarterback. And we've seen Cam just kind of just give up when uh, when he's been knocked around. So, I think I think mm-hmm. the, Eagles, the Eagles is probably where I'm going to be going. All right. I mean, we've got money left either way, but if we put Texans or Eagles, and we, we've got 300 or 500, whichever you want to put in. So, fire. I don't know. But, you know, do do what you want with that. Um, <laughs> Yo, you know what we could do? Yo, yeah. throw in um, Hopkins instead of Thielen and then – Woods instead of Brown. Hopkins. Nah, Woods instead of Crabtree. Woods instead of Crabtree. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Fire. Yeah. That's a go. very good team. <laughs> That's, such a good team. That's a pretty sick team. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Um, all right. That'll wrap it up Uh, for the week seven NFL TFS podcast. DraftKings. We didn't really talk about FanDuel as much. No, nah, we didn't talk too much about FanDuel, but the team there will be fire. The use team. the same, use the similar plays. Same. Yeah. We talked about strategy, which is why we like to yeah. talk about strategy a lot. So a few prices that kind of stood out to us and Taylor um, talked about a few guys. Um, if you guys want to buy a week pass, if you guys want to try our lineups, we do post lineups. We post cheat sheets to locksdfs.com. You guys can get all of it there. Um, our optimal lines. Um, there's week passes, month passes, and that just goes for pretty much every sport. There's hockey and there's NBA as well. Taylor's been posting every single day his favorite uh, NBA plays of the day, his locks and sleepers. So um, with all that said, anything else to say about the slate to wrap it up? Anything? What are you guys thinking? Mm, no. Are we going to continue that giveaway, though, that we, that we were doing on the videos for the NFL? Sure. Yeah, we should. We should because we're giving away on Sunday. That's the plan. Yes. Giving so away a free NBA pass. So if you made it this something point, like. Something like uh, your your favorite. Yeah, no, no, just your favorite play on the slate. Your favorite DraftKings play yeah. on the slate. I would say. I mean, it could be either side, of course. But guy, yeah. a guy that you're jamming and a guy that you're making last. You're like, all right, let's just get this guy. Boom. All right, who's your jam him in play? Who's the first guy you're jamming in when you get I mean, to this slate? He, that's not Todd Gurley. He's not going to be Todd. That's not Todd Gurley. I mean, everyone's going to play Todd Gurley. 
All right, so it's no Todd. Talk- if you say Todd Gurley, you're not you're not entered to win the it's game. It's so funny because like, is there a way Todd Gurley bus? You know, like there's not a way. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, look, look, there's always there's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's there's no way. Injuries, injuries man. Injury, Football, there's, there's no way, way right? Injuries are so crazy, and I hope he doesn't get hurt. But man, like that's the way. That's the only way. That's really yeah, the only way he scores like under twenty five, probably. Yeah, agreed. Um, all right. Thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate it. If you made it to the end, again, comment at the bo- at, below. We'll put that in the description too. But comment with your favorite play of the week. Um, and subscribe, like. We appreciate it. And we will be back. Taylor will be back every day with his favorite NBA plays. But, and Addy's know, action will be Addy's up. action tomorrow, mm-hmm. et cetera. All right. We'll catch you guys. LoxDFS.com. See you guys soon. Peace. Peace.